Hey everyone, so I know that One Piece discussion is already saturated with who is going to be the next crewmate discussions, with myself obviously contributing to that in previous videos, but I wanted to make one last point on the topic, a point that I think a lot of people generally ignore, and it's something that I noticed coming up the more Yamato has been talked about as a straw hat, or potential straw hat. So Yamato has been telling us over and over, practically from her introduction, that she is going to join the Straw Hat crew, and that is her next step. And we've all come to realize the general patterns of what makes sense for a Straw Hat. Usually characters who have some sort of a dream, make some sort of a bond with Luffy, some sad backstory, etc. We all see the trends. But there's another dimension to this that people don't talk about, which is the shifting patterns in how these Straw Hats are introduced to us. Because while many aspects of One Piece are very predictable, such as the fact that we, you know, we always know that Luffy will be the one to defeat the big bad guy at the end of the arc, Oda is still an extremely unpredictable author overall, who keeps us guessing from start to finish throughout any given plot as to what specific things will happen. That is probably one of his biggest strengths, that we can know what the final destination probably looks like, but we are going to be surprised dozens of times along the way before actually getting there. Similarly, with the Straw Hat crew members, yes, we have a general image of what a new Straw Hat will likely look like, we know that someone is going to join, we know that they will likely have a dream, a sad backstory, some nice role that fits them in the crew, all that stuff, but despite us knowing the gist of what we're going to get in the end, do you realize how much Oda has consistently subverted our expectations and surprised us with who actually ends up joining? Because Oda has actually continued to up the ante in terms of unpredictability when it comes to who joins the crew next. This is where things get a little lost to history, because most readers just don't remember. We look at the current Straw Hat crew and say, yeah, of course Frankie makes sense as a Straw Hat, he fits all the criteria, completely forgetting just how much of an out of left field addition Frankie actually was for his time. Because guess what, Oda especially, especially likes to be unpredictable with who joins this main cast of characters, the Straw Hat Pirates, and you can trace back throughout the series and see how he has actually continually pushed himself to find new ways to make the next crew member an unpredictable option. So as someone who has been following the series weekly since Ennis Lobby, let me take you back through a bit of history. Where people tend to get fooled into thinking the next Straw Hat is predictable is with the East Blue Pirates. Because yes, the East Blue Straw Hats were a very, very predictable cast of candidates to join the crew. Oda followed a very simple formula each time. Get to a new island, immediately meet a teenager with some sort of a special talent, a dream and a sad past, and by the end of the arc, they're going to be on the ship. It was painfully obvious each time who was going to join, because this character, this next crewmate, would always be the clear main character of that given arc. I would never accidentally think that, like, Patty was going to be joining the crew over Sanji. This arc is clearly about Sanji. But here's the thing. I've tried to explain over and over throughout various videos that there is a distinction between the East Blue Straw Hats and the rest. The East Blue Straw Hats are essentially the starting foundation of the entire story. They are the true core characters of One Piece. These are the five characters Oda assembled before the quote unquote real story of One Piece even begins. All of East Blue is essentially a prologue to the actual epic of One Piece. These are quick introductions to the main characters before the grand adventure actually launches. The legend only begins in chapter 100 after they leave Logtown, the town of beginning and end, essentially leaving the prologue of the story. Everything in East Blue is by design much simpler, more straightforward storytelling. Oda wasn't writing long arcs to slowly bring a new main character into the fold, we were speedrunning our collection of starter characters. So it's after we leave East Blue that Oda now starts making things less predictable, because the basic foundation for the story has been set, and as the adventure gets bigger and more unpredictable in general, Oda also knows that we the reader are always on the lookout for new characters to join our main cast, which is precisely why Oda starts breaking from the mold more and more in terms of who we would expect the next crewmate to be. Even just starting with the fact that before, in the East Blue, the norm was that every arc got us a new crewmate, whereas now in the Grand Line the Strats would go multiple islands, multiple arcs, without anyone joining before all of a sudden we find an unlikely new member. Again, we look at the Straw Hat crew today and take the zany members we now have for granted. But to understand the point I'm getting at, 
you need to try and mentally rewind and pretend you are a weekly reader of One Piece way back at the start of the Grand Line. At this moment in time, you are very, very used to the idea of what a straw hat is supposed to look like, a teenager with a big dream. That is the expectation of what future crew members will look like. You are expecting at this point in time another teenager. This is after all a shonen series that seems to be a central vibe of the Straw Hat crew right now. That's one of the reasons Vivi right off the bat seemed like such an obvious candidate. Yes, the Straw Hats would go save her kingdom, but obviously she would join the crew after that, right? She just fits the mold of what we are used to so far so well. But the first big twist Oda had was that the next official crew member wasn't even a human at all, but a walking, talking reindeer. This was the first big surprise Oda had in store for us in terms of crew members. It's not as big of a surprise as future crew members, because at the very least Oda still followed a similar pattern of quickly introducing us to this main character of the arc, a young teenager with a sad past and a dream, and it was clear Drum Kingdom was about this reindeer. But still, Oda broke hard from the norm by adding an anthropomorphic reindeer. If you look at the starting six straw hats, one of these things is very, very blatantly not like the others. This was the first time Oda really subverted our expectations of what the next straw hat could look like, and from here on he would only keep topping that because our next crewmate turned out not to be Vivi at all, despite her seemingly being the perfect, most obvious straw hat. Instead, we got Nico Robin, of all people, the second in command of the biggest criminal organization the straw hats had ever faced. Instead of going with the most obvious choice, Oda went the complete opposite direction and actually gave us one of the primary villains of the arc instead, and then the very next crewmate we had was Frankie, who guess what? was built up to be the primary villain of the Water 7 arc. Again, we got to Water 7, we know we are looking for a new shipwright, and Oda even writes in several great candidates as red herrings. You may not realize this, but way back when, at the time of Water 7, the consensus among the community was that the next crewmate, the shipwright of the Straw Hats, was going to be one of these three characters, Polly, Kaku, or Iceberg. Those were the three options that were being debated. And that makes sense, if you still have the East Blue mentality, where we are still looking for a sort of easy fit for the crew, but Oda pulled the rug out from under us by revealing the seemingly big bad antagonist of the arc was actually a big dreamer with a sad backstory who is now going to become an ally. Even all the way through the sea battles, I remember a lot of people still believed Polly was going to join over Frankie, but in the end it was Frankie, the character literally no one would have guessed was going to join in the early stages of the arc or during his introduction, but who made perfect sense by the end. And so then we got to Thriller Bark, and now at this point, we're used to a lot of things. We understand a straw hat doesn't have to be a teenager or even a human. We have a talking reindeer, a cyborg, we have a broader age range of straw hats now. We understand that we don't even have to like the straw hat at first or expect them to be an ally. We have had multiple villains join at this point. So at this point, we're more open-minded as to who could potentially join the crew. And with Thriller Bark, Oda plays with the expectations he set up in an extremely self-aware fashion by giving us Brooke. So again, rewind your brain, think back to Thriller Bark at that point in the story not knowing anything in the future. Right now, it's obvious that a talking skeleton like Brooke is on the crew, nothing is weird about that to us anymore, but just try to rewind your brains for a moment because I guarantee you have forgotten just how absolutely absurd this entire initial introduction with Brooke was. Just the existence of a living, talking gentleman skeleton was easily the strangest character we had met in One Piece so far. At this point, we have seen all sorts of strange creatures, but back then, Brook seemed too absurd to even be real in the universe of One Piece as we knew it so far. And on top of that, for the first time ever, we actually had Luffy ask him to join the crew from the very first chapter he was introduced, with zero interaction necessary. Now, you might not understand why it was so surprising for its time that Brook actually did end up joining, but it's precisely because Oda set up the entire character of Brook to be as absurd as possible, and the fact that Luffy invited him at all was meant to be an absurd moment. For all intents and purposes, this whole scene was a gag scene. The fact that Luffy invited Brook was played for laughs. It was a joke. Brook was made to seem like purely a gag character at first. Oda even played that up throughout the arc that Luffy continued to ask more and more absurd creatures to join the crew as a running gag. This entire notion of Brook joining was framed as a joke. 
Very few people believed Brook would actually join because Oda deliberately tried to make the possibility as outlandish as possible. That was the new way Oda subverted expectations. We had already gotten used to the idea that, okay, crewmates can be strange creatures, they can be characters we don't expect, etc, etc. So now Oda decided to do the reverse. He told us who was going to join from the start, but he made it out to be like a joke. This was clearly a nonsensical decision by Luffy, nothing about Brook really seems to make sense. He is written like a purely comic side character for the arc. And then over the course of the arc, Oda actually took that gag character and revealed new layers to him showing that underneath the surface there is actually a very human figure with a compelling story and a powerful desire. And it's by the end that we kind of come around to it and realize that wow, really anyone can be a straw hat. Sure this guy is 90 years old, sure he already had a crew, sure he's literally already died and got a second life, sure he's a weird talking perverted skeleton, but even this guy can be a straw hat. And then finally we had Jinbei. Many of you may have been weekly readers of One Piece by the time Jinbei joined because it's not that far back, so maybe you remember how unexpected that invitation was. There were actually debates going all the way through to Hokage Island regarding whether or not Jinbei would actually ultimately join the crew, because he seemed like such a surprising pick for the crew. And there's a lot of reasons for that. For starters, if you rewind back your brain back to the time of Marine Ford, the Shichibukai were a big, big deal. Nowadays it's become a bit of a throwaway title, but there was a time in the series where there was a great weight attached to the word Shichibukai. These characters were essentially the pillars of the entire One Piece world, the most accomplished pirates out there, many of whom were far ahead of Luffy and his little crew in terms of status and reputation. I mean Jinbei essentially had to babysit Luffy throughout Marine Ford. There was just such a different dynamic with Jinbei and Luffy in that Jinbei was the one who had to protect him over and over. Watching over him, bringing him back from the brink of despair, with any straw hat in the past it was pretty much always the reverse, Luffy being the strong one who saves that crew member and gets them to join. So Oda sneakily wrote in a bond with Luffy and Jinbei from the get-go in the Marine Ford arc, but pretty much no one imagined Jinbei would ever be a subordinate of Luffy as a future Straw Hat member because it just went against all conventional logic at the time. This guy was a freaking Shichibukai. He was more of a mentor figure throughout that arc to Luffy like a Shanks or a Rayleigh. And so when the time finally came that Luffy invited him, it was somewhat surreal. Luffy was inviting a Shichibukai of all people to join the crew. If you had heard that possibility back in say 2008, it would have sounded straight up impossible. But that's the thing, each time a new crewmate is added, Oda is always breaking a new norm or surprising us in some new way, he's always finding ways to change the pattern and bring in a character that we wouldn't expect at all, but at the same time makes perfect sense at the end of it all. We take so much for granted now and we don't realize how strange certain things used to seem back in the day before Oda mixed up the rules. So for example, nowadays you see all sorts of theories of, oh, what if Marco joined, what if Katakuri joined, hell, what if Aokiji joined. Guess what? Those theories were not around until Jinbei joined. Once Jinbei joined, once the Shichibukai joined, that opened up a whole new world of possibilities. So for a moment, just try and look back and think about how Oda has been constantly finding new ways to make the next crewmate a surprise. He started with the basics, the East Blue Straw Hats, Clean, easy, straightforward picks, these four gave us a sort of prototypical base idea of what a straw hat will look like and what to expect. From then on, Oda kept throwing in a new wrench in the works to surprise us in some new way each time. First of all, the next straw hat isn't even going to be a human, it's actually a talking reindeer. Then after that, the next straw hats aren't young teenagers, in fact, they're not even going to be friends with the crew at first. Rather, they're going to be serious adult antagonists that get in their way who will take much longer story arcs to flesh out and become sympathetic characters. Then after that, we meet a gag character who is obviously not going to join the crew because it's framed as a blatant joke. Only, oh wait, 50 chapters later, we've come to realize this isn't a joke, this guy has a lot more to him, he's not just a gag character, he's been fleshed out, what we thought was a joke became reality and he actually is going to join as a big twist. Then finally we get a Shichibukai of all people, someone who actually saved Luffy instead of the other way around, basically the exact opposite of how every single other Luffy and Straw Hat bond has been formed over the course of the entire series. So all of that is to say that when Yamato is proclaiming from the start that she is going to be a member of the Straw Hat crew and people are just taking this at face value, I think we should be a little more skeptical of this. 
Oda has always been trying to find a new route to surprise us with who ends up actually being the next crewmate. It would be really weird and really generic by his standards if he just gave us a new character who from the start is claiming to be the next member of the Straw crew, and then Oda just had her join in the most ABC manner possible. I've heard people say this isn't weird because, well, Brooke wanted to join right away, but as I explained, people have just forgotten context around that, which is that at the time it was obvious to most people that Brooke wouldn't join because that entire scenario was portrayed as a gag, as a joke. It took a 50 chapter arc for Oda to flip that gag into a reality, that was the surprise. Yamato wanting to join is totally different because this is not treated as some sort of a joke. Yamato does have a clear, seriously portrayed motivation to join. And the vast majority of readers are just taking her word for it that she is going to join. This has never happened before and it would honestly be really strange for an author who has continually strived to find new ways to make the predictable process of getting new crewmates as unpredictable as possible. An author who has continually come up with new ways to mask who is actually going to join next, for him to actually just say, here's a new character, she is the next crewmate, I'm just gonna phone this one in, I don't know. Now, sure, I think Yamato could join at the end of all this anyway because maybe Oda just doesn't care about being unpredictable anymore in regards of who's gonna join. I'm just saying I personally think she is more likely to be a red herring based on how he has done things in the past. So. That's all for this video. If you enjoyed, then definitely like, comment, and subscribe. And you can support me on Patreon to get my extended thoughts on this and all future topics.